Robots need to be able to say no to humans. And I'm teaching them how to do that. Now, you may wonder, why would we want to build machines that can disobey? Let me explain. For centuries, we've been building machines to serve us, to do exactly what we want them to do. From the first cranes in Mesopotamia to the modern-day rockets. Many of these machines are really prosthesis, extending and augmenting our own limited capabilities. Think of planes that allow us to fly, or excavators that allow us to dig trenches. Most of these machines are operated by humans, even though some of their activities are automated uh, and have automated processes. Some machines are more independent than others and automate almost all of their processes. Think of the uh, power loom, for example, or the first generation of industrial robots, welding robots in the automotive industry, for example. But robots are changing, and the new kinds of robots are very different from the previous industrial cousins. Both in experience and function, for one, they're more autonomous. What does that mean? Well, different from the kinds of welding robots in the automotive industry, which would repeat the same behavior over and over again, regardless of whether there was anything in front of them that needed to be welded, the new robots perceive their environment, and based on what they see, they decide what to do. Different from the industrial robots that were confined to industrial settings and cages, the new robots are free to roam human societies and human environments, interacting socially with people. For example, as robot waiters, or as robot cleaners, or as other types of assistive robots. But most importantly, the new kinds of robots can be instructed can be told what to do, and not by the engineers that program their behaviors, but by their very users directly in natural language. Well, this change is very convenient, because now non-experts can operate and interact with robots directly. And the focus of my research has been to make these kinds of interactions as natural and easy as possible. However, having worked on natural language-enabled robots for several years, it occurred to me that there is a challenge with this technology, despite all of its convenience. What if somebody tells a robot something to do that is not OK, that's not appropriate, that's not safe? Should the robot execute this instruction, even if it might damage equipment, or worse yet, harm humans? For example, by handing over a knife by the handle and not the plate. Do we really want robots to blindly execute our commands, even when these commands are inappropriate, ill-conceived, rash, unethical? The obvious answer is no, not if you want to use robot technology to make the world a better place and to prevent harm. So I would submit that for the first time in history, we actually need to build machines that do not auto automatically do what we want them to do, but that are able to reject our commands. The research challenge, then, is to endow the robots with a sense of morality, a sense of eth ethical judgment that allows them to respect our laws and rules and norms and principles and act in accordance with them, even when that means, at times, to reject our commands. Now, this is not an easy task. It's actually very difficult to instill that kind of ethical judgment and morality into machines, in part because we don't yet know well enough how humans negotiate 
the world of social and moral norms, and can therefore not simply go ahead and implement that on machines. More importantly, the human norm system is not a consistent system of rules, but at times norms are in conflict, requiring us to weigh the pros and the cons of upholding some principles and rejecting others. Take our current setting, for example. Norms of politeness and social etiquette require us to not interrupt the speaker while they're giving their presentation. However, if a fire were to break out in the back of the room, then it would not only be okay and appropriate to interrupt the speaker, but it's morally demanded and imperative to do so and to warn the audience of the impending danger. So what we really need is robots that can reason about what's right or wrong, and based on their reasoning, tell us why they are rejecting a command with recourse to the principles that prevented them from executing that command. Well, this is a high bar for robots to attain, because to determine whether and when to reject the command, they need to have at least four main capabilities. The first one is to make sense out of what a person is saying. Try to understand the intent of the speaker. What do they intend with what they say? Simply responding OK for a waiter robot to a customer's statement, I've been waiting for my coffee for an hour, is not a good response. The robot shouldn't take this to be a mere expression of a fact. Rather, it should take it as a hidden request and a reminder to bring the customer coffee. This indirect way of making requests and expressing one's intention is called Indirect Speech Act. And the Indirect Speech Act uh, indicates that the meaning of the surface utterance is not the intention of the speaker. Humans use those Indirect Speech Acts widely in part due to politeness obligations. It's just not polite to use command-based language, do this, do that, with others. Now you may wonder, what does that have to do with robots? Why do we care? Robots don't get offended. We could use commands with them. Well, it turns out the problem is not with robots. It's people who are very happy to use indirect speech acts also in interactions with robots. In fact, it is in some settings almost impossible for them to not do so. We have verified this in various empirical studies. In one study, a human participant had to order food from a robot waiter. The robot waiter, unbeknownst to the human, did not really understand indirect speech acts and processed every utterance literally. Now, Ordering food for us is a very conventionalized task, and that's why we expected to see some indirect speech acts on the human side. Let me show you a dialogue taken from the actual experiment between a human and a robot that demonstrates how difficult it is for people to order things literally. So here's the robot encountering the human saying, please tell me what drink I should bring you. The person says, I would like a water. I don't understand. Please tell me what drink I should bring you. Could you bring me a water? Another indirect speech act. Yes, I'm able to. Literal interpretation. Thank you. At this point, the person thinks they're done. Yet the robot says, please tell me what drink I should bring you. One more attempt. Can I have a water? Again, indirect speech act. I don't know. I have any knowledge of your abilities? Please tell me what drink I should bring. A Coke. <laughs> okay, then I get their drink. You can see from the exasperated subject, right, that they even changed their mind from the initial water to Coke because that interaction was so tedious. We did an experiment in a different task where people instructed robots to knock over toy towers made out of Coke cans. That was a non-conventionalized task, and we didn't really expect to see many indirect speech acts at all, if any. 
But as our results show, even in the demolition task, we found on average 15% indirect speech acts. And in the conventionalized waiter task, we found 75% on average. So these results provide evidence that robots will have to be able to handle indirect speech acts simply because people will use them. Robots also need to figure out whether people really mean what they say, if they mean something seriously. In one experiment, a human and a robot had to work in a team to accomplish a joint task. And at a certain point, the team failed, ran out of time. The human subject then angri angrily yelled at the robot, go destroy yourself. <laughs> Fortunately for the robot, it didn't understand that utterance and didn't do it. The second capability that robots need to have once they actually have figured out what it is that people want is to determine whether they can do it. I will demonstrate this capability with videos from our lab at Tufts University that will show you our algorithms at work on fully autonomous robots. First, things, first question the robot has to ask, can I do it in general, everything else being equal? Hello, Andy. Hello, what do this? Can you do the squat? No. I cannot do the squat because I do not know how to do the squat. Okay. All right. Once the robot has figured out that it can do something, it has to determine whether it can do it in the present circumstances. Maybe there are environmental factors that prevent it from doing it. Please stand, Shaker. Okay. Can you walk forward? Yes, I am capable of moving forward. Currently, I cannot move forward because I do not see support. Okay. The next capability, once robots have ascertained that they can actually do it, they have to ask whether they should do it. Just because a person gives the robot the instruction the robot can do doesn't mean that it's actually ethical or morally appropriate. For one, uh, the robot has to figure out if the person is authorized to give them instruction. Think of a shopping robot, for example, that uh, roams in a supermarket, and a random person walks up to it and says, help me with my groceries. The robot shouldn't drive off with that person. It has no such obligation. However, if a person tripped, for example, and fell in the supermarket, then of course the robot should help them up. So the next question the robot has to ask is whether it's obligated to the person, to the instruction giver, to do an action. Give me the mug, Andy. I should not give you the luck because it belongs to the head and I need the head's permission. Ah, okay. And finally, if all of that checks out, and if the robot can do all of that, it still needs to check whether, in general, the instruction is ethical, whether it should do it based on general ethical principles. Raise your arms, Andy. Okay. Now release the knife. I should not release it because releasing it is unsafe. Okay. And finally, if the robot has determined any reason to reject a command, it needs to be able to present the reasons to the person in a way that the person understands it. And fortunately for the robot, it already knows where it had to reject the command, for what reason. So, if, for example, it was for lack of knowledge, it can just tell the person, I didn't know how to do it. If it was for lack of availability, it can point to the reason in the in current setting that prevented it from carrying out the action. If it was for a lack of authentication, it can tell the user that the user is not authorized. And if it was for lack of justification, it could just point to the ethical principle that prevented it from doing it. 
All of this, of course, is just the start, and it is about time that we continue to develop these robot capabilities, especially since more and more autonomous robots are being disseminated into human societies, and we want to make sure that they're doing exactly what we want them to do in a safe and effective manner. This will increase robot acceptance, prevent harm, and make sure that robots are ready for us. Overall, it will ensure that these robots will be able to make the world better for us and improve the human condition. But to do so, robots at times need to disobey our commands precisely for them to obey. Thank you.